The Ryan and Russ Show is sponsored by Vision Homes. If you're looking to build a new home in North Central West Virginia, visit askvisionhomes.com. Vision Homes, building you a house you're proud to call home. And don't forget to subscribe to The Ryan and Russ Show, but don't take our word for it. Take Coach Nealon's. Hi, this is Coach Don Nealon, and you're watching The Ryan and Russ Show. Please subscribe. <laughs> And we welcome you in to another edition of the Ryan and Russ Show, your source for West Virginia sports. We're a week out from Houston versus West Virginia in Houston. Little, not your typical average Thursday night game. Uh, the former coach of the West Virginia Mountaineers, Dana Holgerson, uh, of course, is facing the current coach in Neil Brown. And we thought, especially since it's a short week next week, we would start our coverage of West Virginia versus Houston. So what not another better way to do it than discuss these two coaches and their coaching style, kind of where they come from and how we expect them to compete against one another. But Ryan, we'll, we'll lead it off with you. How do you expect this coaching match for obviously from the coaching side to unfold next week, Thursday night, uh, seven o'clock on ESPN? Well, I anticipate them both uh, downplaying it all week. You know, coach talk at its finest. Oh, you would know it's just the next game on the schedule, but both are lying. If they tell you that they, this game doesn't mean a little bit more anytime, especially for Dana that you leave a place and it didn't end exactly pretty. You want to, you want to stick it to your old team. And then Neil probably didn't like the situation that he took over. So he probably wants to stick it to Dana. So a little bit of bad blood, I would say headed into the matchup, but I would assume there'll be professionals and politically correct. Like every other coach seems to be other than Dion. Dion likes to stir the pot a little bit and whoever Dion's playing likes to take jabs at Dion. So Outside of Colorado, usually the coaches steer clear and they just say the right thing and they take the high road. Um, but a lot of similarities between the two. Mm -hmm. Two offensive guys, uh, both coached at Texas Tech at one time. Both are Mountaineer uh, coaches, current and former. So uh, I, I, two, two good coaches. I mean, they're different in their styles, approaches. Yeah. Dana, definitely more emotional. Uh, Neil, more calm, cool, bit. collected. So – it's all, it, you know, a lot of different ways to skin a cat, and this is a perfect example of how to be successful in, in different ways. We kind of have a uh, air raid versus a ground and pound coming up, or th at least yeah. that's what historically we think is going to happen, or at least, hey, the, the what West Virginia is this year. But let's take a, let's take a little stroll down memory lane, sh shall we, Ryan? Uh, yeah. We'll start off with the former head coach. Give a little history on Dana Holgerson. Uh, his first head coaching job was West Virginia in 2011 where he won the Big East Championship. And, of course, that uh, started off a little interesting. He was actually hired as the offensive coordinator he here. Uh, there was a little back talk going on, little back channels going on with uh, Oliver Luck and, of course, the coach at the time, Bill Stewart. Kind of seemed like that uh, going into the Big 12 2012 that, that uh, Dana would take the head coaching job here. I think Bill Stewart got a little whiff of that. Uh, there was a little internal strife there. Never good. Uh, and uh, Dana ended up pulling off the Jim Schwartz, right? You eventually get, you get hired as the coordinator. And then, hey, you want the head coaching job? Absolutely. So that's where Dana started. Um, his first big 12 school was Texas Tech, like we talked about. Uh, worked along Sonny Dykes there. So there's, there's a tie right there. And, of course, under Coach Mike Leach, RIP Mike Leach, and Coach Graham Harrell, um, Everyone may know that name, Graham Harrell, for good or for bad. Uh, take your side on that. Went on to be the offensive coordinator and wide receiver coach at Houston. Coach Case Keenum, of course, another name a lot of people should know. And coached alongside Cliff Kingsbury. And then, of course, in 2010, uh, came to good old Oklahoma State and coached alongside Mike Gundy. Uh, so, you know, Dana's kind of your, your Mr. Big 12 here, Ryan. Went, ended up going uh 61 and 41 at West Virginia at Houston, currently 29 and 23. Of course, uh, that's more of mostly of that's the American conference because this is Houston's first year. As we know, of course, as you talked about earlier in this episode, things ended a little badly uh, in 2019, uh, maybe to end of 2018 after that camping world uh, bowl loss to Syracuse. Didn't even take the, the flight back home, went straight to Houston. And we usually know what happens there. Uh, he yeah. wanted four million at West Virginia. Uh, they ended up, I guess, getting Neil Brown for around two and a half to three million. Um, and you know, obviously, Dana had some great years here at West Virginia. Ryan did did amazing job. I think he ended up getting up to number twelve 
one year won some great bowls, beat Oklahoma. Um, and, and, the what was it sugar bowl? What was that? The 70 to 33 game and did a lot of great things here. Clemson. How, yeah. Clemson. Pardon yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Thank you. You were thinking, you were thinking away. You were thinking of Bill Stewart taking over for Rich Rob, but yeah, I did no, the Venables. I did the Venables yeah. mess up, but yes, yes, you're yeah, correct. Yeah. It seems like these transitions, a couple of the transitions got mixed up. Obviously we know what Clemson did for there. We totally exposed their defense. Then they hired Venables who now is the Oklahoma, uh, yes. coach, but Ryan, when we look at Dana's tenure here at West Virginia, and then of course what he's done in Houston, great coach. No one denies that. You said it kind of emotional, a little bit of a hothead. Uh, <laughs> so people kind of went the wrong way with him kind of towards the end. It was probably right that, that he did leave West Virginia. It's kind of weird at the time, but your thoughts on the Dana Holgerson era and what he's done at Houston so far, Ryan. Uh, definitely an entertaining era. You mentioned it, uh, I mean, he's the second active winning his coach in the Big 12 behind Mike Gundy, to keep it in perspective. Under Dana, I mean, we were in the top 25, 68 weeks. And for eight years, I mean, that's a pretty good sample size. He had 10 ranked wins. Probably his best win was 2014 when we beat Baylor, who was in the top five all, all year long with that really good team under Art Bryles. That place was rocking that day. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, and then of course the Clemson orange bowl where we're still scoring that night. Um, what, but one thing that Dana's teams unfortunately always did, they did not finish strong. I mean, he went no. two and five in bowl games. Um, we had really bad finishes. I mean, for example, you're talking about the last year we lost three in a row the year before that in 2017, we lost three in a row, uh, 2014, 2013 and 2012. We had stretches where we lost five out of six, six out of seven. So we always stumbled down the stretch with Dana. But at the same time from a – I mean, if we're all being realistic here and not emotional, the Dana Holgerson era in West Virginia was successful. It was a top yeah. 25 football program. I mean, I just read off the stats where they were ranked 68 weeks in, a, in an eight-year sample size. So – Always right in the hunt, but just couldn't get over the hump and never finished strong, but always an entertaining brand of football. You knew they were going to throw it all over the place. Ironically, probably his best years, um, 2016 and, and 2018, they were really good at running the football, especially in 2016 with Skylar Howard. So kind of like Neil, Neil was a, is a happy uh, pass first guy. Dana too, but you know what? When they had to run the football to win games with uh, some limitations at the quarterback position, Dana could put his ego aside and find a way to run the football with those talented backs. So those are my thoughts. I mean, I love the Dana era. I thought it was mm -hmm. fun, entertaining. We just couldn't get over the hump at the end, especially that last year where we lost in Stillwater and then lost to Kyler Murray on that uh, phantom holding call out of bounds. Well, and I think there's something about, too, cheering for the coach that when we were students here, what you yeah. do. And it was yep. such a great time to be students here with the football team and basketball team. It was, it was, it was a great time in West Virginia sports. And you're absolutely right with Skylar Howard. I mean, people didn't expect, you know, I, I mean, on paper, kind of don't expect a lot out of him, but man, yeah. Dana did a great job with him. I mean, enough where, where Skylar, I think he went to preseason camp with the Seahawks. I mean, NFL yeah. teams were looking at him, but you're absolutely right. Kind of not on the micro and macro level scale. Um, you know, those, kind of just always left a, oh, like we weren't as good as yeah. it felt like we should have been, especially uh, 2017. I know Will Greer broke his thumb against Texas or his finger. Um, and, you know, that ended his – we weren't as good, obviously, from there. You don't have Will Greer. But, of course, the the 2018 year with, with Will yeah. Greer, Dana's here, last year here, just went off to a just a great start. And then, you, you know, you lose to – the Iowa State game, I mean, that happens, but yeah. the Oklahoma State game, that one really hurts. And then, of course, the BS uh, against Kyler Murray. And then, you know, Greer had a couple fumbles in that game where he tried to turn something into nothing where Oklahoma was able to capitalize. And then, of course, the, the whole Syracuse Camping World game. But our yeah. team wasn't there. Our team didn't show up. Dana knew he was out. So it, it, it just it just we knew like it seemed like at the time once every four to five years in West Virginia sports like you have a chance to be a national contender right and that yeah. year felt like the year you got Will Greer from Florida and it just didn't happen but that record was not a reflection on that year yeah un un unfortunately the good defenses were in 2016 and 2014 the most talented teams were probably 2012 and 2018 because you had Will Greer and then you had Geno Smith yeah. and Tavon also. I mean, we're watching Geno still play play his tail off for the Seahawks right now. And 
both those teams kind of spiral down the stretch where you start five and oh, you're in the top five. We talked about how Neil was on the other side when they beat us in Lubbock. Uh, but yeah, both years just spiraled down the stretch because the defenses weren't consistent enough to pair with those talented offenses and uh, the quarterbacks. And hey, it's kind of something we saw a little bit with Neil Brown until this year. Obviously, knock on wood, you know, hope we see what we've seen with offense and defense playing into their strengths. But speaking of Neil Brown, let's do a little dive on him. Uh, he started his Big 12 career in 2010 under Tommy Tuberville, kind of took over part of that new regime as the Mike Leach uh, regime left. The t uh, Tuberville era comes in. Neil Brown was at Texas Tech. Uh, 13, 2013 through 14 was the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach for his hometown and where he started his career, uh, Kentucky, uh, under Mark Stoops, of course. And then 15, 2015 through 2018 is when he made it to Troy, uh, as we know, he made, had the in 2017 was that was the year for him. Won Sun Belt Coach of the Year, won the Sun Belt itself in 2017, and of course that famous game uh, where he took down number 25th ranked LSU at LSU. Pretty sure that game was homecoming as well, and then still won the Sun Belt East in 2018. Of course, he comes over in 2019, replaces Dana Holgerson, as everyone knows, uh, for a little less money, about a million to a million and a half less. As to this point, including his uh, record this year in 2023, he's 26 and 26, so right at 500. Uh, 2019, he went five and seven, which I know he had that kind of stretch in the middle there, and we'll kind of talk about each year individually here. But actually, was did a lot better than a lot of us thought. Started out three and one. 2020, of course, we had the COVID year, which was tough for everyone, but we ended up going six and four, beating uh, beating Army in the Liberty Bowl. Uh, 2021, where things kind of get a little stagnant, go downhill a little bit, six and seven, lost the guaranteed rate bowl. 2022, we all remember that year last year, of course, five yeah, and yeah. seven. And 2023, maybe this is where he makes it up and becomes the coach that that we wanted, the coach that got the two-year extension uh, back in 2021. Uh, he was, I think, 11 and 11 at the time, and he got that two-year extension under Shane Loins, um, Lyons. Uh, and... So his contract right now goes through 2026. It was originally a six-year deal, um, obviously tacked on two more years uh, and, and made it hopefully he's doing well enough to be here for all eight years, if not more. Uh, but Ryan, so far, and we'll maybe take this a little bit of year by year, thoughts on the Neil Brown error so far? Uh, if you throw out these five games, it's been underwhelming. But obviously so far this year, it's 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 been a great start in – the, the realization, too, is this is kind of the first team that's had a true identity in a five-year sample size. And that's probably, and I think, in our opinion, that's why this team has been so much more successful and they're more veteran on the offensive line. Um, one thing about Neil's teams versus Dana's teams, Neil's teams always actually finish kind of strong down the stretch. In 2019, yeah. you mentioned they won some games where they, that was probably his worst team in 2019, won some big road games. 2021 they had to win four out of six coming down the stretch to get bowl eligible and then last year um they went two out of three against the oklahoma so kind of reverse uh in terms of that uh we have not been ranked in the neil brown era even though we should, probably should be ranked this week and we yeah. may be ranked uh come next thursday when some teams lose um but yeah i mean it, it's taken a while to get to get it to where it is now i am i think it should have been at this level in year three but hey man we're here in year five, and uh, I think we're in a good situation right now. All right, we're in a great situation. This situation needs yep. to continue, right? It's You just mm -hmm. talked about it. Is Dana would start strong, finish short. Uh, Neil Brown would start short, you know, finish strong. And let's hopefully we get the continuation right there and we not kind of revert back to – to the the Dana days, but but going back, we'll start with the first year he was here, 2019. Hey, we were at that game, Ryan, the the first one against uh, number two FCS Dukes. ranked James Madison. Of course, James Madison, a really good team, uh, a team that's actually doing really well in the FBS. Ended up winning that game, 20 to 13. That was grinder. Uh, ended up losing at Missouri, but beat NC State, beat Kansas, started three and one, and this is kind of where that stretch of losing five in a row began. But I mean, this was a year too that people need to realize how strong the Big 12 was. And there really was no expectations for Neil Brown at the time. I mean, I don't know about you, Ryan, but I remember thinking, man, if we could get three, maybe four wins this year, we'll we'll be in a good place. But that middle stretch lost to 11 Texas, 
Um, lost to, you know, tough game to Iowa State, wasn't ranked, but then we lost to five Oklahoma, lost to 12 Baylor, and then we all know we haven't beaten Texas Tech till this year, uh, but ended up beating number 24 Kansas State, lost to number 21 Oklahoma State, and then won at TCU. Shocker. For some reason, we always do great at uh, Fort Worth, rounding out the record to five and seven. Ended up being, like I said, uh, a solid year with five wins, more than I expected. Uh, I don't know about you, Ryan, but I felt like, he started off that season like, okay, we, ha we have someone here. Yeah. It's uh, we, this year, like you said, the expectations were low. They played a lot of freshmen. Um, the frustrating part about this year is probably all the home losses. They didn't win a single big mm -hmm. 12 home game. So that's, that was one of the biggest frustrations with this year, but to finish on the road at TCU and at K state, who was ranked at the time too, a good K state yeah. team was a good uh, stepping stone into the next year, year number two. So they finished strong. They started fast. It was a little bit of a soft schedule with uh, JMU, and then Kansas was really, really bad at the time um, under Les Miles. But they finished strong, and it kind of get got some momentum going into what we didn't know at the time would be the COVID year. Yeah. So the COVID year ended up getting – we started off against Eastern Kentucky. Obviously, the schedule shifted. Uh, we only play two non-Big 12 teams, with one of them being the, the bowl game at the end, Army. So the regular season itself was only against one non-Big uh, 12 team. Uh, ended up losing at Oklahoma State. They were number 15. Of course, we lost at Texas Tech. Uh, lost at number 22, Texas, and lost at number 9, Iowa State. Believe it or not, Ryan, this was the year that he kind of just won all the home games and lost all the away games uh, with no one fans. of those. Well, yeah, no, it wasn't. Obviously, a, <laughs> that's what he needed. No, we don't want yeah. the home field advantage. Clear everyone out. That's our best. Yeah. That's our best play right there. Ended up beating number sixteen Kansas State in twenty twenty. Goes six and four. We talked about it. Ends up being I think eleven and eleven. Uh, and then Lions gives him the extension, the the two year extension, and his contract goes up. Uh, something where I made him. It was, I had one of those. Oh yeah, moments. You know, has a, you you knew something, you forget it a bit, and then you go back and check. I thought he originally signed a four year deal. I didn't realize it was a six-year deal. And then when he added on two years, obviously, which makes it an eight-year deal, why? I, I know other other uh, programs and stuff were interested in, in Neil at the time, and there was a little bit, oh, we need to protect our coach. We may have something here. But you're 11 and 11 and coming off a pandemic year. Maybe give it one more year before, before you sign this extension. Like we said, it may end up working out for us. We're hoping it is off to a great start this year. Keep it going, you know. Let, let's let's say, hey, good thing we actually got that extension. But still on paper, Ryan, interesting extension for for Neil Brown. No, you're being nice. It was that was a bad extension. <laughs> it was. Yeah, I mean, they 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 were eleven and eleven at the time, and their best win was over Army in the bowl game. So, I, hey, you know what? That's that's in the past. It is what it is. Um, like you said, we're hoping that Neil and this staff can continue to take this program to a, to another level. Here in year number five, it's just taken two years since the extension, which I don't think it should take that long in this day and age in college football. But uh, you know what's crazy, too? You take out the four home games, the four uh, home wins this year, it with actual fans in the Neil Brown era were 13-9 and nine at home, and that's including three wins this year. So headed into this year, he was 10-9 and nine at home when it actually is a Mountaineer field. So that And that was what we talked about in the preseason as yeah. one of our nitpicks of the Neil Brown era is too many home losses, which they fixed this year. Yeah, and and got to keep it going too. Win out, win out your home games, you know, of course, win a couple more on the road and you'll be good. Uh, let's go to 2021, Ryan, and then we'll, uh, we'll maybe merge uh, 2021 and 2022. This was, this was, we, they lost at Maryland, which was absolutely ridiculous. Of course, beat LIU, end up beating, you know, a game at Virginia Tech, which was nice. Lost at Oklahoma. That was the Garrett Green, you know, the snap that went too far. It happens, of course. Got to lose to Texas Tech. Got to keep that streak alive, Neil, in uh, 2021. And then lost at ba Baylor. Ended up streaking together a couple games at the end. Ended up finishing 6-7, and seven, losing to Minnesota 6-18 uh, to 18 in the guaranteed rate bowl. I think a couple guys, uh, Leedy Brown, uh, sat out that game um, as, as well. Uh, but it, it, was, it was at that time, Ryan, and we don't – need to go hard into 2022 had kind of had the reverse of the five and seven everyone members last year maybe it's better if i don't bring up 2022 yeah. <laughs> but it just i think the thing with neil is yes we saw the kind of progression and then it just kind of plateaued 
And that's why everyone was questioning the extension, you know, especially that loss at Maryland, not being able to finish the game at Oklahoma. I get Oklahoma was four in the country, but they clearly weren't playing well. And it just, it, it just felt like whatever was happening, we just couldn't finish games or one side of the ball looked great. The other side didn't look great. And it just, it didn't seem buttoned up. We couldn't get anything consistently going. And I think that's been the biggest I think we lost Rush. So, yeah, no, I I agree with Rush's points. Uh, 2000, um, 2021 was definitely a disappointing season. Um, just looking at it, and, and then you look at the, what, what you, you, you highlight what the disappointing loss was, and that was losing to Texas Tech. Texas Tech was the game that kind of spiraled the season. Um losing that game 23 to 20 because we had played well at Oklahoma the, the week before in a primetime game. We probably should have won. And that's what, that's what we were talking about a couple weeks ago that we need to get this Texas tech loss off our, uh, off our chest and uh, four years of frustration. Um, so, I mean, that 2021 was definitely a disappointing year on to 2022 of the Neil Brown era. I, I think that everybody agrees on this one that, uh, beyond disappointing. Uh, it, it started at Pitt, a game we should have won. Wasn't able to close the door and get that one. And then it, it, one loss became two losses because we lost to Kansas in the home opener. Um, and, and then finally, we, we just were playing catch-up after that. Uh, we, we were able to beat Towson at Virginia Tech was a win. And But it, it all started with dropping that Pitt game in a game we should have won. And 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 it turned into two losses, losing that Kansas game. And, and Rush, welcome back. I thought, Thank I you. thought it was, I thought it was me for a second because obviously no. my uh, Wi-Fi acted up. So um, now I was just talking about. Hi, Tom. Uh, two, yeah, it's uh, uh, 2021 was a disappointing year, but two, it kind of set the tone for 2022. Yeah, it kind of led into another. You can kind of group those years together. I think yeah. uh, Neil Brown heard me being a little critical. He called Comcast real quick to shut off the Morgan Cut the wire. Wife. <laughs> Cut the wire. Get rid of these yeah. guys. Uh, yeah. But anyway, sorry about that, everyone. Uh, going through the hot spot right now. But <laughs> what's up, Timothy Green? Thank you for your support and staying on, everyone. But it just... It, it was never too... It wasn't like... Uh, don't get me wrong. There were a couple games where we got absolutely demolished by teams right we can think of texas tech a couple of times those games happen they happen from time time to time but i think the most frustrating thing in the 2021 year and the 2022 year were those games where it was like we could have won and you know yeah. the at maryland game we just brought up the of course the pit game and and we're making up for it this year and of course that needs to continue like everything else but it it just was like Button up, Neil. Like, like what, what, what is you missing here? And I think that kind of goes with to when you talk about strengths and weaknesses of Neil Brown, right? Strengths. He knows his X's and O's. He's been under great mentorship, great leadership. He knows the game of football. There's no doubt about that. He he's a great recruiter. There's been, you know, we've had years where he's gotten a top 25 recruiting class. Yep. It's been, it's been the lack of feeling the moment. We've talked about this before. Like yeah. under like just what's going on around you and feeling it. And I think that's the biggest change from the first 4 years, but especially the last 2 Ryan to to now is this is a team that's making halftime adjustments. I mean, we see it what the last 4 games they've only scored 14 points and 7 of that was against Duquesne and the other 7 I think was Texas Tech and the other 2 have been shutouts against TCU and Pitt. It, it's it's nice to see that he's learning from his mistakes. Now we need to can, we need to to see this growth. We need we need it to continue. We and like I said, we can't rest on our laurels. We're four and one. And this matchup, we'll talk about this matchup a lot next week, Ryan. 
But this isn't a guaranteed win by any means. Is Houston a great no. football team? No, yeah. probably not. Do you think Dana's on a revenge tour? Do you think Dana yeah. remembers everything? <laughs> Absolutely. This 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 will be a game. We're not going to blow them out. Yeah, no, it's it's a desperation spot. They're the desperate team, and we're banged up, man. I mean, we're we're probably going to be shorthanded going into this mm-hmm. game. So, and, and you know what's crazy too? The more I look back on 2021 and 22. You don't even like recognize those teams like compared to this team, like in terms of like discipline, brand of football, physicality, like those teams were so boring to watch because they didn't have an identity compared to this team that that has a clear identity of smash them out football, play elite defense, make adjustments, uh, don't beat yourselves, play good special teams and, and win the turnover battle. So this has been a fun change from the those two years that were tough. Um, kind of, kind of, and even, even the COVID year, man, this team's mm-hmm. way better than the COVID year too. Oh yeah. And with that team finishing six and four. Well, and I think too, the lack of identity comes from, I think Neil was trying to put out too many fires at once or try to make everything good instead of playing yeah. into your strengths. Right. It, that's that old saying, if you have everything, you have nothing. Or if you try to fix everything, you're going to end up with nothing. And it goes back to that preseason press conference that Neil Brown had when he's like, you want know this year, we went back to basics. We practice open field tackling. We just we just stripped everything down to the most basics because if you get the fundamentals right, then that's something you can build off. You know, your foundation is the most important thing of everything, and and he, I, it's something that I think he finally he's always known that, but I think he finally understood, accepted that. it. Yeah. Yes, accepted it and realized you know what we got to get back, and it's showing. The defense is flying around. The offense is taking advantage of their their line. Good Cole Taylor tight end running backs, what your quarterback's able to do. And then, you know, a couple physical wide receivers when they decide to step up. So it, it's good to see the adjustments that are being made, but Hey, there's still a full season ahead. It's a long season. And as we know, to this point, it's a war of attrition. So got to stay healthy too. There is a luck factor in this as well. A hundred percent. And to get back to the original episode title, Dana versus Neil, Day or Neil's done what Dana did in 2016, where you got a guy in Skylar Howard who we've compared Garrett Green to in terms of competitiveness, limited, but you would love you love having them as your quarterback. Dana ran the ball all year long that year. They ran for over 3,000 yards on the season, five and a half yards to carry with multiple talented guys in Crawford and Shell. I mean, mm-hmm. they are yeah, doing the exact great. same thing that 2016 did. And ironically, that was the only year that uh, Dana won 10 games. So, I mean, I, it's 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 ironic because they both want to throw the ball, but what you got you got to accept what your what your uh, personnel is and embrace it and get everybody to buy in when you have a veteran offensive line. So it's kind of funny just looking back at 2016 and seeing so many similarities to that really good team in this it's- team this year. And it doesn't even have to be West Virginia, Ryan. You can name any yeah. NFL or college football team. It's amazing what happens when you establish the run. Yep. that's yep. It's everything. It's everything. Because then we trust, you know, someone like Garrett Green. Okay, establish the run. Maybe they're getting to, but it opens up the passing game. It, it, it does. It does great things when you establish the run. So anyway, that's today's episode. We will be back next week, a week from today, short week next week. Uh, we've got some basketball ahead. Obviously, we're talking this game. We'll be talking about this game all week, but we'll throw some basketball in there episodes. We'll have that nice crossover going on. We love yeah. and appreciate every one of you. Thank you for interacting in the chat. Thank you. Excuse me again for the, the interrupted Wi-Fi, but appreciate the support, everyone. We love you. Again, thank you so much for everything. And hey, reach out to the Ryan and Rush Show at gmail.com, and we'd be happy to send you a free hat. So again, thank you so much. The one that Ryan's wearing, they're good hats. So anyway, you love you all. Have a great day. Uh, The fun continues on the Big 12 college experience after this show starting at 6 o'clock. We'll do the Big 12, talk about the games coming up this week. And then again at 7, we'll be dropping in uh, with Mark Rogers on the Voice of College Football with a couple other West Virginians talking, going more in depth about Neil Brown. So we've got plenty more shows coming up tonight. Come find us later, y'all. But, hey, appreciate you for now, for today. And go Mountaineers. Go Mountaineers. See you guys. Have a good weekend.